Welcome back. Today we are going to fire up our blenders and learn about the remesh modifier. So let's go ahead and do new file general and let's do Perry to zoom into our monkey and let's save it. We'll just call this remesh as well. And there we go. So first thing we want to do is take our Suzanne monkey here and let's make it manifold because if we use the remesh modifier on anything that doesn't have uh, or if it's non-manifold, you know, if it's got holes in it, it the remesh modifier just doesn't know what to do with it. It's like, does not compute. So let's fix that first. So go ahead and erase that. Um, and let's take Suzanne into edit mode. So we'll just do that. And let's just erase the eyes for now. So I'm just gonna highlight the eye with L over here, hit L to highlight that, and just hit X to delete the vertices. And now we've got a monkey head with big holes in it. So let's take our 3D print tool box clean it up and make it manifold there we go now we've got a monkey here and it is manifold so now let's try the remesh modifier so let's do add modifier remesh and we should get a quite a different result it does take a lot of a little bit of time to go because it's very heavy and the reason that is is if we turn on wireframe so go ahead and turn on your wireframe boom look at that we've got all these crazy voxels all over Suzanne. So if we turn that off, we hit that little, this guy right here. Notice, you know, if we, let's turn on our stats. So we can, let's get statistical here. So we've got um, 444 faces with the remesh. It probably is going to go into the million. Yes, yeah, so about, about a million here. Um, but if we turn off the overlays, you can see it's trying to preserve the original shape of your geometry and remesh it. And this works really well uh, if you're just if you're having issues with maybe a, a design, it's just not uh, doing well. Sometimes I'll just throw it a remesh on it, and it kind of just kind of like welds everything together and makes this nice little uh, kind of I don't know I don't know how to, I I just like the look of it, just like the the kind of the the melting of everything, all the the booleans and everything just kind of get melted together, and I just think it's so satisfying. So. That is the remesh modifier. So let's go ahead and turn back on our overlays and look at our voxel size. So the size of the voxel is, oh, you can think of it almost like pixels. So this is like 0.1 millimeter pixels that it's trying to remesh. You can go smaller than this. You could go like 0.01 or 0.001, but it's gonna be very, very, very heavy on your computer. And you know, you might get into the tens of millions. Uh, so I would just keep it at 0.1. Maybe sometimes I'll do like 0.2 or 0.3. So 0.2, you can already see it's a little bit less dense and 0.3. But if you go up, then we're kind of losing the kind of the original look of our design and it gets a little bit more uh, blocky looking. So I like to keep it at 0.1 for most things that I'm doing. And that's gonna give you kind of almost, almost identical of what your original geometry was. And this is a new type of, uh, kind of mode that they've added to the remesh. Um, also, uh, there's adaptivity, and that's just going to try and kind of even out the, the mesh. So notice we have a almost a million faces here. If we crank up the adaptivity, it's going to try to lessen the count of faces and only put the kind of the heavy dense geometry around like the corners and the edges here but say where the mouth is very flat notice it's got nice big squares and we've lost about half of our face count so that's okay if you're if you're you know if you want to kind of lower your uh, file size i don't really ever use adaptivity too much but i just wanted to show you uh what it does in case you need to kind of uh make it more adaptive to the way it remeshes your object. And there's also shade smooth uh, or smooth shading. And we don't really use that too often because we're doing hard, hard surface modeling. So if you do check that, it's just gonna try to make it smooth, um, which is not really true to what it's gonna look like when it's printed. So I don't really ever do that either. So I would just keep that off if you're doing 3D print design. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about these other three guys. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's do blocks. So blocks is really just, I mean, I think I only use it if I'm trying to get like a texture or kind of like an abstract look for my designs. Um, I usually don't use it this low, but maybe if you 
crank up your octree depth, that's just going to add more blocks to your design. And it's going to start kind of filling out and looking more like your original design here. I kind of like it around seven or eight. And we're getting this nice kind of like retro, um, blocky 8-bit kind of look. And I really, really like that uh, just to add quick texture if you wanted to. And there's also this scale little slider here. So if you want to change the kind of uh, the scale of your blocks, you can do that. Um, like say if we went to like 0.1, then it's going to look kind of similar to um, when we had our octree depth down to, to around 4. Uh, so I don't really ever change that much either. You can just leave it at like 0.9. Uh, where it was, or even like 0.8, whatever your eye, whatever looks good to you. Um, then you have remove disconnected. And that's like if you had um, non-manifold geometry, like the eyes that were here, remove disconnected is going to try to remove anything that's kind of floating or any um, geometry islands, you could call them. Um, and the threshold is going to kind of increase or decrease the amount of... Um, you know, how, how hard the remove disconnected is searching for these, you know, floating islands to remove them. And again, we have smooth shading that we don't really need, but if you turn it on, it's going to look pretty weird. <laughs> but uh, again, you don't need that if you're doing 3D print design. So that is your blocks. Again, really it's kind of more of a uh, cosmetic kind of look. Um, then you have smooth, which is going to try to remesh your design, but keep, keep the overall kind of shape um, or like the edges kind of smooth. You can kind of see the edges here are kind of been smoothed out a little bit. Um, and the same thing goes here. You've got your octree depth. So, you know, if you wanted to kind of play with that, you can get different looks. Um, the ear is kind of thin right here. So if you have thin walls, it may kind of collapse it a little bit. But the higher you're going to crank it up, usually around eight or nine, seven, eight, nine, um, you start to get kind of the original geometry um, obviously, the voxel is much better looking, uh, but this may be a look that you're trying to go for. And then there's also sharp, which is, you know, the cousin of smooth. And that is just going to remesh your design. So if we turn on our overlays with the wireframe, you can see we've got a lot more geometry, but the difference is all these edges are very sharp. So if you are or want to preserve your, your edges for your design, then you may want to use the sharp. And that's going to make it look very, very crisp. Um, and you could go even higher, but just note that it's going to increase your uh, your face count every time you go up. So what I usually would use is the the voxel. I don't really use these three as much, uh, but I just want to kind of go over what all of those do in case you need it for a certain situation when you're 3D print designing. Another cool thing that you can use uh, with the voxel remesh, or really all of these, but again, I use the voxel remesh, and I'm just gonna zero this out, kind of how it came in. So what's cool about this is you can sculpt with this. So this is a way to just create quick geometry um, and start sculpting. So go ahead and save, and let's flip over into sculpt mode with control tab, and then go down. And once we get into sculpt mode, it's got a lot of polygons here. So let me even turn off wireframe so we can kind of see what's going on here. But you can't really sculpt while the remesh modifier is here. So if you want to create, uh, you know, take your object and add a lot of geometry really quickly while keeping the original shape, uh, you could use the remesh. Uh, that's just another workflow, uh, but you have to apply it. So once you apply it, we're actually, you know, confirming all that geometry. Now, if we go and sculpt, we're getting a lot of resolution and we can smooth it out and just do all kinds of things with this now. So. You know, that's kind of the different things you can do with remesh. There's also remesh up here. So remesh, and we cover that more in the sculpting lessons, but you can see it's very similar with the voxel size and adaptivity. Um, they do have some extras here, uh, but you can essentially remesh objects while sculpting. And Amber, my lover lady and co-captain, she uses the remesh a lot while she's sculpting. So if you, you know, need some geometry really quickly, you can use the remesh. So that is all I have for the remesh. Um, one last thing before we do go, um, if you are ever having issues with your 3D prints, like maybe it's not uh, slicing correctly or just having a lot of um, kind of 
internal geometry issues or something, uh, you know, try a remesh. Sometimes I'll throw a remesh on there uh, just to kind of fix some problems or just to kind of give a kind of like a unified look to my designs. So that is the remesh modifier in a nutshell. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more information on what it can do and when and why and where to use uh, the different modes. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson and keep on designing.